how, how has your stay been so far? Um, have you picked up Australianisms? <laughs> G'day, mate. Anything? I heard something about a bear falling, and oh, okay. uh, you guys tease people with what is it? Uh, is the drop bear. I, the I drop talking. bear. Yes, <laughs> yes. There, there's that. Um, I, so I'm here with uh, my family, so yes. my wife and my two girls. Uh, they're 12 and 14, and this is the first time that they've traveled internationally. Sure. So I figured that I'd hack their brain, and I would take them on their first flight to Australia. So in the future, when they hear, uh, I've got a five-hour flight, they'll say, oh, that's not very long, right? <laughs> so, you know, being a good dad, I'm, I'm trying to hack. But um, as far as Australianisms, um, it's fun to see the world through their eyes. Because sure. they notice things like, hey, the light switch, you push up to turn it off and down to turn on, and it's opposite in the United States, and the yes. plugs, and, yeah. and sure, things like sure, that. So. Sure. Okay, yeah, each country has its own uh, peculiar uh, uh, things about it, so that's yeah, cool. yeah. Okay. And seeing, and seeing the wildlife. So we went to the aquarium. It was my uh, daughter's, my youngest daughter's birthday uh, yesterday. And so we went to the aquarium, the wildlife uh, uh, zoo, and then um, to the Tower Eye, I believe it's Sydney, Sydney Tower Eye. Sydney Is that Tower, yeah, 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 right, yeah. okay. And um, the one thing I really wanted to see was the platypus. And sure. she was sleeping in the corner in the back the whole time. And oh, we okay. kept on coming back to try to see her, but, yeah. uh, but anyway, it, it's That really fun. confounded Darwin, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that animal is uh, out of the planet. So. Yes. <laughs> okay, now, um, I just wanted to start off by learning a bit more about you personally. Uh, we all know about Daryl Wilson, about Wilson Speakers, mm -hmm. but we maybe don't know that much about Daryl Wilson. So. I, I, David Wilson was obviously one of the industry leading lights, and I'm just wondering uh, how, what, what important life lessons uh, you derive from uh, from uh, spending time with uh, David Wilson in the context of of yeah. Uh, Wilson Audio. Yeah, that. Um a question uh, that could take a long time to answer because you th you sure. think about. Um, the, the relationship I had with my dad was really special for me, um, and I was blessed to um, to have him around for 40 years. Um, he passed away shortly after my 40th birthday, and um, he taught me to uh, treat everyone with dignity and respect, no matter who they are, what they're doing. Uh, treat a CEO the same as a server, right? Sure. So the whole concept of divine kinship that we are more than what we do inside the building of Wilson Audio, that we're fathers, we're sons, we, we have passions and pursuits outside and, and, and to honor and respect that. Um, and in uh, representing yourself well, people want to get to know you better for the way that you treat them. Uh, the pursuit of excellence is another one, that no matter what he did, he always was trying to refine his craft and he was always trying to find the most efficient, the best way. Uh, whatever that definition of excellence was, he was looking for that. And it's more important to have a f fewer things that you're pursuing excellence at than having a whole bunch of things that are mediocre. Sure. Uh, I still struggle with that a lot because I still have a lot of you know, uh, uh, pursuits and things that I want to learn and, and I f always feel like there's not enough time in the day. Sure. I don't know if anyone here has, has felt that. <laughs> But there's really not enough time in the day to, to really <laughs> pursue. So um, simplifying one's life and then really refining what those things are to the point of excellence. Sure. Uh, it's, a, it's a noble pursuit. And I have to say that I noticed those things and those ethics when I visited the, uh, the facility, the headquarters, Wilson Audio headquarters uh, uh, late last year. Uh, so that what you're saying actually has carried through mm -hmm. to practical levels. At, uh, at at the facility, at yeah. the factory, within departments of the of the facility, and within you know the structure of people that work for Wilson Audio. So that's carried through. So, uh, Thank you for the kudos yeah. kudos for that. So you would have had quite an interesting education in terms of your your introduction to, to music by David and Cheryl Lee. Yeah, um, us audiophiles are weird. <laughs> We walk into a room and we think, how does this room sound? Mm -hmm. I know everyone that walked in this room that cares about sound and has spent a lot of time and effort on the acoustics in their room, sure. you walk in and you think, how does it sound? And how does it look, yeah. right? And so um, I've I had a lot of conversations about um, critical listening, what to listen for, how to listen, how to identify 
uh, when you are fine tuning a crossover, what this capacitor, what this inductor, changing the values up or down, how it's affecting the crossover points and levels and, and, and whatnot, and how does that translate to, is this serving the music? Is this helping you get closer to the music? Um, and, and that even goes down to less than a percent difference between component values. Sure. Um, and, you know, there, there's some manufacturers that out of um, uh, efficiencies, you know, it's, it's plus or minus 5% for things, and that's fine. It doesn't break it, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. But when you want to close your eyes and you want to experience the musician in front of you in the most realistic, lifelike way that fools your mind that something's there that's not, you have to be dedicated and uh, and uh, you really have to listen down to the less than 1% sure. to get the nuance. Sure. It's it's really in that last half percent that you that magic really pops out. Sure. So there's a point where you actually reach the, that value of the resistor that says okay, that's what I'm looking for. That's the sound yeah. that I'm that I'm looking for from this particular speaker at this particular price point or this physical fun form of the speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For uh, for this this size of a loudspeaker. What's the performance on envelope that we can get from this this size? Sure. And we try to get everything we can. And and uh, anyone who's uh, had the pleasure of listening to Sabrina's Sabrina X, you can hear how much uh, it punches above its weight. Sure. And that's us extracting as much as we can out of that that form uh, and and that size. So that brings me to the next question, and it's a very very simple question. Uh, how should a Wilson audio speaker sound? What do you what do you aim for for a Wilson audio speaker to sound? Is there a family sound? Is there something that you aim for? Yeah, the, it, I think it's a circular equation. If if um, someone is trying to find a sonic characteristic or um, like we call them artificial sweeteners, right? Things that are seductive in the moment. Um, our North Star and I've said this over and over again, is live unamplified music. And that's what my dad believed, and that's why we've gone to uh, various concert halls around the world to experience music in the Concerto Bow, to go listen to performers and, and rehearsals at, in Severance Hall um, and at the Music Verein, having special access where um, Riccardo Muti is, is talking to uh, the performers, and we're able to walk around and listen in different areas because every performance, and a lot of people will argue, hey, that's the best, to go hear it live. But the seat in the front right corner is different than the seat in the middle halfway back, right? Yes. Just wave the way that, thank you, the way that, that waves form and pressures builds and the way we perceive sound in spaces, uh, it changes. Um, and so to be able to hear that and what's different as you change the seats, but also what's the same. Sure. Um, so those kind of experiences have really honed what I listen for. Right. Um, so it's 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 been a, a a unique opportunity, and I feel very blessed. And uh, the fact that you're visiting the Opera House tomorrow night, yes. and so that'll be a totally different acoustic uh, signature and acoustic uh, space to Music Verein and the Concert Cabal. Yeah. And yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, are you looking forward to that concert? Absolutely, that's a bucket list item for me. Yeah. Uh, when you when you think about great concert halls around the world, this is it's it's one that if you're serious about listening to music, you got to check that off the list. You got to hear something serious, and uh, I'm going to be experiencing uh, the great mass um, yes. and my and <laughs> actually with uh, so. Uh, with my oldest daughter, uh, we like to play chess together, right. and she swears one day she's going to beat me, and that's okay, and, uh, and I hope she does. <laughs> right. and, uh, and, and as we play chess, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity just to talk about life lessons. Yeah. She'll, make, she'll make a move, and, and it's like, oh, wait, wait, can I take it back? No, in, in life you make decisions, and sometimes you can't take it back, that's right. and, and you have to live with it, and sometimes you make bad moves, but you can make, in three moves, you can make a really good move. Yeah. So it's okay that you made a bad, let's move forward. So we talk about this stuff, and the last thing we listened to before we came, well, while we were packing, it was Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, of course, right? Because, yeah. you know, we're going to go see him yeah, in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it was the great mass before, and, and it's like, we're going to be listening to this in the Sydney Opera House, and let's experience it on our system, Let's experience it there and then talk about how it's different, you know, in, in the space versus our space. Sure. Uh, so I love those kind of conversations and it reminds me of the conversations I had with my dad. Yeah, sure. So uh, when I was in, uh, in Utah, 
uh, late last year, I attended a concert at the uh, uh, Temple Square mm, yeah. and uh, with the Tabernacle Choir, and it was incredible. It was world class. And, and so I understand that these concerts are held very regular, on a very regular basis, yeah. and most of them are free. And these, it, it was incredible. So is there, a, is there a relationship between Wilson Audio and the uh, Tabernacle Choir? Yes, yeah, the Tabernacle, they're um, in the conference center and the Tabernacle, their audio control rooms all use Wilson Audio products. Um, we have a, a special relationship where we're able to go and we're able to listen there uh, during dealer training. All of Wilson Audio's dealers come to Wilson Audio to be trained. It's a three-day curriculum uh, as far as the Wilson Audio setup procedure and, and, and all things related to you know, being an authorized dealer. And one of those things is going to uh, the, the conference center and seeing the different audio rooms and being in that space. Okay, so that brings me uh, to, to, the, to the V. So I found that uh, the difference between Alexia II and Alexia V was quite remarkable. And uh, the Alexia V is a much more dynamic mm. uh, speaker. It has incredible bass, fast and, and, and punchy and detailed and nuanced. Uh, and that carries across to the mid-range and the top end as well. Um, so if you had to pinpoint one or two aspects of the new generation Wilson speakers that uh, are responsible for that change in sound or that improvement in sound or that development in sound, what would you, what would you select? If it's, if it's only one or two aspects, is it the V material? Or, you know, what do you think? Yeah, there's so many players, yeah. right? And they're all important. Sure. And um, so changing one you know, you, you might get a one, two percent increase in performance, right? Changing another is a half a percent. But when you go through and you go from top to bottom and you identify um, what grassroots technology have we been working on for the last five years, how can those be integrated into this next version in an authentic way? Um, and how can we maximize those technologies in whatever package we're putting it in, the size, sure. right? There's some things that um, Alexia V can't have that the XVX has just because of its sheer size sure. and the space to put things. Yes. Um, so um, so l saying two things is, yeah. is hard for me, okay. you know, because I don't look at, uh, we made a better tweeter, so we're gonna upgrade this whole system and then and badge it differently and then sell it. It's, sure. To me, it has to be like with the Alexi V, there's over 30 things that we went through and said, we're fine tuning, we're making, we've developed this and we can authentically integrate it into the system and it makes a difference. So when you have 30 things, the, the performance increase isn't just subtle and it takes you really squinting your eyes while you're listening to hear it. It's obvious right when you turn it on. Sure. Um, so I, I would I would submit that it's across the whole symphony that we're making changes in a lot of different places and then allowing it to play. And and the the sum of all that is greater than just one or two big sure. improvements. Sure. Okay. So you when you make thirty improvements uh, from one generation to the next. What are the next 30 improvements that you're looking oh. for for the next generation? This, this, is, this is why I'm bald. Uh, okay. <laughs> I step up to any product that we've developed in the past and I know this was the absolute best for this size at that time. Sure. And it's a big task to make it, you know, better. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a serious endeavor and it's one that, um, that I don't even start pursuing unless I have a very long list where it's like, okay, now I can make this thing substantially better. Uh, but I, I do stress about that a lot. There, um, two times I stress during product development is the start of a product. And like, uh, <laughs> there, there's a, a well-known, well-respected uh, Wilson Audio loudspeaker that I poured my heart into and it is named, uh, it has a very special name. And in looking at that product and at that time and the emotion that went into that, thinking that product at some point needs to evolve, sure. right? 
we've developed a lot of stuff up to this point that this product doesn't have, and I know it can be better. So right before the development, I stress a lot that I, just like doctors, first do no harm, sure. right? So approach it respectfully and cautiously at the beginning. And then when I get into it, then it's like, okay, here's the fun. Then we start playing. We start, you know, really diving into it. And then at the end of the development cycle, when it's all signed off and everything's done, we have a, a development freeze. That's when my anxiety kicks back up again. Right. It's, it's like, it's done, yes. right? Now, as an artist putting something out there, how will it be received, sure. right? And so that's, that's a, a point of vulnerability for me, you know, yeah. because I, I don't, I, I, I leave everything on the table when it comes to every product that we develop, and so does the team. Everyone at Wilson Audio puts their heart and soul into it. Sure. Um, and so I, I find that's a point of vulnerability. Um, and uh, but, so. But at that stage, you already know that this product is superior to the previous generation. Oh yeah, yeah of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, so it's not rational. I didn't so say that that's it's right. rational. Yeah, sure. But it's it's just that that ner it's the. It's the, the calm before the storm, sure, right? Sure, sure. And, and I guess that, that, and you that, never know how it's going to be received. And, and, you know, what if there are some changes that I made aesthetically that people say, ah, you know, I like the old one better. There, there's risk in, in putting any art into the world. Of course. And I guess that storm, that, that wave grows even larger and more stressful for you once the, uh, for example, the V gets uh, trickled down to the last product. That has a that, that that has the V denomination, yeah. uh, and that's when the cycle starts again from the top, right? For the uh, next generation. Uh, how do I answer this in a succinct way? Um, in our um, R and D research and development at Wilson Audio is not just um, one area of new product development. There's, uh, there's new product development for the core Wilson Audio line. So we dedicate time and resources and we have um, uh, Gantt charts and, and how, how do we make our core, you know, floor standing, this is Wilson Audio products, you know, better. And so we're developing there. And then there's the uh, special applications engineering, right? So the pedestal, the acoustic diode, the, the active XO subwoofer dual crossover, you know, the, the supportive role elements, um, which are important because they support the top line. Sure. Right? And if we can make these better, we can make all Wilson Audio products better. And you take this over to the side, and even if you don't own a Wilson Audio loudspeaker, there we have adapters for the Wilson Audio acoustic diode to make those speakers better. So, um, so there's development in this area where um, no matter what the system is, there you can fine tune your system to increase the performance using Wilson Audio products or special application products, sure. right? And then the third line is we always have grassroots development going. At any given time, there's at least three to five grassroots elements in a loudspeaker or in uh, WASAE that we're working on and fine tuning and researching and getting new materials, getting new samples, conducting tests, measuring, all that stuff is going on, all three of these levels. Right. Right. Um, and people ask me, you know, how, how, how are things different with you compared to your dad? And my dad was very laser focused on the top line, right? The, the loudspeaker side. Um, and then um, he would switch gears and be really focused on this, you know, on, on the next stuff that are supportive, but it's way more fleshed out now as, a, as a, an official department at Wilson Audio. And then he'd switch gears and then work on these things. But the, the way that the teams evolved, um, we have an incredible team. Mm -hmm. And all of them want to put everything into it and all of them want to contribute in meaningful ways to make a better product. And so as a team, we, we meet weekly, every day we're having meetings, side meetings, and, and products are developing, and, and, and uh, we have three listening rooms, and so in one room we've got you know, uh, experiment A set up, and room number two we have a prototype or a P2 of a product that's being developed. We've got listening stuff going on, dealer training or whatever happening in room three. Uh, up in uh, uh, my dad's listening room, we've got the final development of something going on, sure. and then we've got in shipping, we've got parts that are coming in, and, and it can be really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so uh, our R&D department, we're, we're always looking at, at creating um, whatever the thing is, the most excellent version of that thing. Sure. When I get to a point where I think that it's, it's close to um, getting the most out of all the components, <coughs> um, I have listening sessions with uh, the sales team, I have the R&D team come in, and, and we listen, and sometimes it'll be in groups, but I prefer to have individual listening sessions sure. so there's no influence on each other. Of course. We're yeah. human, right? Yes, of course. Um, and, and just talking about the sound. Sure. Uh, there are times when it, it's there and, and everyone says, holy cow, that, you know, we did it. Yeah. We being the operative. Sure. Uh, and there are other times where I, I, I hit a roadblock um, and it's, I'm trying to I'm trying to problem solve this one area right here, and then we all start working around it. Um, earlier in the development cycle, uh, uh, P1, so our first prototype that comes up, never painted. It's always gel coated. Um, I find a lot of joy, and I know that you know children tend to do this with crayons on the side of painted speakers. But I'll get the you know marker and and I'll write on the side and and make notes as we're talking as a team. Sure. Um, and so I'll have uh, uh, members of, of production and, and the fab shop and paint and come in and, you know, these angles right here, can you make these angles? What do we need to change here? You know, how is this going to paint? How is the paint going to lay on it? Um, the thickness of the material is this, you know, can we do this? And I'm asking those kind of questions and, and the craftspeople all have input at that point. Sure. Um, that's also a, another thing that is um, slightly different than the way my father managed. Right. Um, I, uh, he was very wise to put me in every, just about every department at Wilson Audio. Sure. And so I worked side by side, shoulder to shoulder. I, I cried, I, I, I bled, I sweat with <laughs> a lot of the guys that are still there. Right. 60 employees, average tenure of 12 years, right? Yes. And so talking with them and joking with them and, 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 and having them feel comfortable about giving me input, that's the kind of relationship we have. Sure. And so real magic happens there. The, the relationship that we have uh, with, our, um, with our suppliers is uh, one that works very well. They uh, produce very good drivers and then they send those drivers to us and then we're able to evaluate them from a, a mechanical perspective and then an acoustic perspective. If it measures well and sounds bad, it is bad. Those get thrown to the side, right? If it measures bad and it sounds really good, huh, I, I wonder, and me and Vern, we'll talk about this, what elements are causing it to measure bad? What things sound good about? Why, why is this something that's capturing our ears um, but as far as the measurements, that it's not, you know, it's, it's not performing. Um, and so we'll go back and forth with the manufacturer. We, we like this one, but we have concerns in this area. Can we make it better if we change A, B, C, all the way down to Z, right? And we go back and forth. And, it, and there have been times when we've gone back and forth and still it doesn't reach the threshold in which we require. And so we abandon that project, but Almost every time, there's something we learn during that cycle where we say, hey, do this and then send us a sample and then bam, we start off at a really good place. Um, and so that kind of relationship uh, is, is really healthy for Wilson Audio, that they're, they're willing and open to do that. Um, and then also, um, after we finalize the development of a driver, we get the drivers in and we further modify them in-house. So we have special chambers we put on them. We do special things to you know the surrounds, um, and and our matching process is is state of the art. And so our drivers are absolutely unique. Even if a person was to get the final version that we signed off on, because of the modifications we do in house, it's not the same driver. Um, so I think it was quite quite a challenge for you to actually develop the the new mid range driver with the Onico uh, yes. magnets and so on. So there must have been quite a lot of back and forth with the uh, supplier for that for that uh, particular product. And once you kind of signed off and yes, this is the the driver that we want, then you further um, modify that in house as well. Right? Yeah. yeah, that that's a perfect example. Our first Al Alnico driver had three slugs on it. And it sounded so sweet and beautiful, and my dad was captivated with it. But the sensitivity was too low; it couldn't be matched with our, uh, you know, our tweeter and our woofers. 
if we tried to match it, we'd have to throttle everything down so much that it, it just didn't make sense, right? But we knew that there was something there. And so we went from the three slugs to the quadramag for the, to the four slugs and then boom, sensitivity came up. Um, control also went up. And so the sonic characteristics benefited from that ex further exploration. Instead of us just saying, hey, it's too, it, the sensitivity is too low, so we're just going to throw it aside. We further you know, uh, plowed that field. And so everyone's worried about AI right now. Right. <laughs> AI is going to take over the world. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, computer modeling that's very sophisticated. You go back 10 years, 20 years, computer modeling is so different now. Uh, we're able to, to see things and have simulations show us things that we couldn't see before, right? Um, but still, even after all that, we uh, build up a loudspeaker based off of computer modeling, and we listen to it, and it sounds dead. It sounds unnatural. It's flat, right? Frequency response is only one dimension of, of such a multifaceted uh, type product. Um, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a relationship where we start off with simulations and, and the theoretical. And, it, and, and some companies kind of stop there and that's okay because their products you know, you know, fit a, a, a particular market, right? When you're creating laboratory grade um, loudspeakers that have precision in the time alignment down to microseconds, um, it, it has to be further than just the simulations. You have to, you have to balance that with uh, the, the listening back and forth. The, the heart of that comment really is we use a wide variety of products to develop our, our products. Um, everything from Parasound to, to Spectral to Dan D'Agostino to Nagra, um, you know, audio research, the, Macintosh. We have a lot of different types of gear at Wilson Audio, and you saw it. Yes. Um, and, it's nice to be able for me to, to listen to a variety of stuff. Of course. Um, I, and, and constantly, um, uh, me and the, the sales team and employees at Wilson Audio were constantly bringing gear home, listening to it on our Wilson Audio systems, and, and we're trading out stuff and experiencing so things. So different contexts. In, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So uh, if, if we're not doing our job right, um, then you won't be able to hear the differences mm -hmm. between the electronics. Sure. Um, there was... Uh, a, a great, I love this uh, demo my dad did back at CES. It's the famous iPod, yes, yes. right? And so we had um, our speakers, uh, Sophia's at the time, and then an opponent's brand right next to it. And then there was like $50,000 worth of electronics that were connected to um, the, the opponent's brand. But we made it look like through a, a Nagra preamp that those electronics were going to both systems and we would just switch back and forth. Mm. But it turned out that you know under the under the hood was an iPod, was right. you know an, an older iPod playing a wave file, sure, right, sure. and it was going to a Parasound amplifier, right. So for like two thousand dollars worth of electronics, we did the demo and we switched back and forth, and people were like, yeah, you know the the Sophia, it's it's better. They didn't say oh it's way better. They just said oh it, it's better. Mm -hmm. It's it's close, but okay, I can hear this product is is better, and it's like meet your customers where your customers are. Yes. And if you have an exceptional loudspeaker, every time you upgrade electronics, you will hear that all the way down to the nuances. Sure. It doesn't get lost right when it hits the drivers. Yes, yeah. Excellent. Any other questions? Um, in recent years, some of the loudspeaker manufacturers started to build their own electronics. Why active speakers? Is there any plan Wilson will move in that direction? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I say I say that with a little smile, on, and I know Trent's got a smile on there because every year during our annual meeting, we talk about a lot of different things. Where where is the industry going? Where uh, where could we take uh, valuable? Uh, resources, time is is uh, is the most precious non-renewable resource we have, right? So we have to dedicate our time wisely and our resources wisely. Um, so where do we want to put our time and resources? Um, 
active loudspeakers has been brought up year after year after year because we have dealers and distributors around the world asking, you know, how you know you could do this. We could sell a whole bunch of them, and and at the end of the day, we feel like the technology isn't quite there as far as having a system that we expect to perform at a certain level. If we choose convenience over performance, I think that that's contrary to our, our core values. There may be a day where it's indistinguishable and then maybe that conversation could be had um, and, and we'd be more serious about doing something like that. I don't think it's there yet. And, and I still kind of rib people that say that they're wireless and it's like, it has to plug into the wall. There's a wire there. <laughs> There's a power cord. So it's not truly wireless, but anyway, that's just me ribbon people but um yeah they're um yeah at this point no no connected to a, a high quality system even a, a, a modest system um, a wilson audio product is going to reveal what's what's behind it what's driving it um, and we want to continue to keep the performance at the highest level so anyone who buys any of our products um, experiences their gear how do we engage with music is going to be different for every person. And I'm not the type of person that says there is only one way to enjoy your music. And if you listen to it another way, it's somehow inferior, right? And I think that that's the debate that continues to happen is the vinyl versus digital. And, and very persuasive argument, digital is getting so good. And you only, you look back 10 years, I mean, even five years ago, but 10 years back, and you compare, you know, a decent, you know, uh, turntable to, you know, what's being streamed or, you know, whatever's on your hard drive, and who knows where the source of that was. But anyway, that's, it's you know, stories. Nice. Yeah, the good old days, right? Uh, bad old days. Um, if, if you're consuming music and you're getting joy out of it, who's anyone else to say if that's good or bad? If it's good for you. Now, the heart of your question is, um, I, I think, what do I prefer? I prefer vinyl. Um, on a, a, a top tier system. Um, in my dad's listening room, there's a TechDOS One Premium, and it is phenomenal. The, the, the amount of information that's extracted from the grooves is incredible. Um, at the same time, you know, a, a high quality the DCS uh, stack, it, it has uh, the ability to create that sound stage in still a, an incredibly believable way. And when we demo, we don't just demo with vinyl. We demo with streaming, with CDs, with SA CDs, and with vinyl. So we use four different sources to prove the point that you can have an exceptional experience no matter what your source is, as long as it's not like MP3s. I mean, you're going to hear the compression and that kind of stuff, right? But if you, if, if you have, uh, you know, full res files and, and, and you have a turntable, and you're going to get joy out of that. And then let's step back, you know, as the recording was happening, how good was the recording engineer? So it doesn't matter what you're playing it on, if the recording engineer didn't do their job, you know, it's going to be compromised, you know, as it hits the mic or before it even hits the mic. So, uh, you know, that it's, that's a, it's a deep debate and it can be, you know, fought very valiantly both ways, right? Um, I, I think that we're in a golden age of audio reproduction systems and equipment that there are so many companies that are creating beautiful, high quality and great sounding gear that us as the, the artists that are putting the, and assembling the systems together, that we're able to get more out of our system than, than ever before. And that means that your system can have completely different components than my system and they're both performing exceptionally well.